Now, this segment is usually uh, devoted to uh, conservative bloggers who are saying ridiculous things online. But you know what? Why not to Peter King Khan, who is saying ridiculous things on TV? And it's perfect for him because he represents the conservative mind to a T, authoritarian to its core. So now what he's pissed about is how dare anyone challenge the NSA? especially a fellow Republican like Rand Paul coming out and saying that he might even sue the government because he along with 300 million other Americans have apparently been spied in on, right? And Peter King is outraged. Here, we go. Here comes King Kong on drones, on the NSA. Mm. The president basically is carrying out the right policies, but he sounds apologetic in defending them. Mm. For instance, he's talking about making reforms in the NSA, but doesn't say why. If the policies are working effectively, you know, why should certain reforms be made? And so I think the president has to be more aggressive because otherwise you have people like Rand Paul and both Democrat, Democrats and Republicans who somehow demonize the mm -hmm. NSA and others who are carrying out the war for us. He's just warming up, now that's just an appetizer, saying Rand Paul is demonizing the poor NSA. And the problem is, President Obama won't stop him. I know, because when President Obama tells Rand Paul to stop, he usually stops, right? That's usually how politics works. So I don't know if he knows how Obama and Rand Paul get along. All right, now he's about to step up his game here. Uh, go ahead and tell us how terrible Rand Paul is. The NSA is not listening to anyone's calls at all, and no one, no uh, record at all can be looked at unless it has a direct connection with the foreign terrorist. So Rand Paul does not know what he's talking about. And Rand Paul is really spreading fear among the American people. And he also, today I understand in the show, is also comparing General Clapper to uh, Snowden. I mean, to me, either he's totally uninformed or he's part of that hate America crowd that I thought left us in the 1960s. In any event, he doesn't deserve to be in the United States Senate for spreading that type of uh, misperception and ab absolute lies, to be honest with you. Damn, that was a nice three for three there. The hate America crowd, usually reserved for Democrats, but in this case, he's throwing it against a Republican senator from Kentucky. Interesting uh, how that'll play out. And then he says he's spreading fear in America. I thought that was Peter King's job. You remember the whole hearings on all Muslim Americans? Well, we, you know, we don't know which one could be a terrorist. So, we, so everybody be incredibly afraid, especially of Muslims, the Muslims are coming. Peter King talking about how someone else is spreading fear in America, that's rich. And then finally, he's like, he doesn't belong in the United States Senate. That's right, if you ever challenge the establishment, whether it's from the right or the left, the establishment says, tut, 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 you don't belong in our cocktail parties. You don't belong in this fun little circle that we've got going here. How dare you challenge the government? Don't you know that as an authoritarian, you're supposed to bow your head and say, yes, Mr. President, even if he's a Democratic president? Don't you know that, Rand Paul? See, Rand Paul maybe is a libertarian, and Peter King thinks a true conservian, conservative always bows his head to authority because you're authoritarians. They did that for a long, long time under Bush. Why not continue it under Obama? Now, here's more from King. It's me that people like Rand Paul are putting American lives at risk. That if we listen to Rand Paul and follow his policies, Americans could die. Because the NSA has stopped attacks against the United States. Right here in New York, the uh, Zazi attempted subway attack in 2009 with liquid explosives was stopped primarily by the NSA. If Rand Paul had been around and we listened to him, hundreds of New Yorkers would be dead today. That would be on his conscience. Or maybe it wouldn't be. Maybe it wouldn't bother him. I don't know. The fact is, he has to realize there's, there's an impact from what he says. If we follow his policies, it's going to lead to the death of Americans. You see how Rand Paul is fear-mongering. Because if you don't listen to Peter King, it's going to lead to dead Americans! Be afraid! The subway would have blown up! Can you see how Rand Paul is fear-mongering like that? Tut, tut, tut. Okay, now that Zazi case has been disproven a hundred times that it, it didn't have anything to do with them spying on Americans, the fact that that was stopped. So that's a total lie by Peter King. And then to say, well, look, if you don't agree with the NSA and you don't agree with big government looking in on all Americans in a clearly unconstitutional way, clearly against the Fourth Amendment, well, then you, I guess you want Americans to die. D-I-E, die. Okay, now, believe it or not, we have not gotten to the worst part yet. Here comes the worst part. Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont says uh, Congress members don't want their phone numbers known. They don't want their calls listened to either. 
Why shouldn't Congress be treated the same as everyday Americans? I agree with you. I think members of Congress should be treated the same as everyone else. If a member of Congress is talking to an al-Qaeda leader in Iraq or Afghanistan, why should that member of Congress be any different from you know, any person on the street? So Bernie Sanders, he had a phony argument. What they're trying to suggest is, is that somehow the NSA is spying on members of Congress. They're not spying on anyone. Oh, no, they're not spying on anyone, except the 300 million Americans. That's all, though, okay, which they've already admitted to. In fact, James Clapper admitted it. he lied when he said we weren't spying in on 300 million Americans. So do you understand what he's saying there? He's saying the government should be allowed to spy in on members of Congress just in case they're talking to Al-Qaeda. I know that's why the government would do it, right? Because they're worried that Bernie Sanders is talking to Al-Qaeda and Rand Paul is talking to the Taliban. Yeah, that's why they'd be spying in on them. No, they'd be spying in on them to find out what they're saying. <laughs> it, it, Peter King might as well say, you know what, I, I don't really believe in democracy. I think the whole Constitution is massively inconvenient. Wouldn't it be great if we had an emperor and whatever he said was just the rule of law and that's it? And you know, if he declares someone an outlaw, well then they're an outlaw, right? He wants to spy in on members of the government, Congress, <laughs> the people's representatives, that's a good one. And he was a spying on all his people, of course he can, he's the king, he's King Khan. <laughs> so Peter King does not believe in democracy at all. He believes in authoritarianism, and unfortunately far too many conservatives these days agree with him, and they've forgotten what real conservatism is supposed to be like. I, apparently some libertarians still remember, like Rand Paul, certainly progressives remember, but people like Peter King have forgotten a long time ago and they don't give a damn about our republic or democracy.